Hey, I wanted to give you a tour through the AppPressor 4 app customizer and account setup if you are new to it. So I'm going to give you just a couple little example apps and then we'll get, we'll get started. So I have here our AppPressor, Learn AppPressor app, which has some LearnDash courses. It has a login so that the content is protected and it has uh, you know, a blog page that has some of the blog posts from our website. It has the uh, BuddyPress profile and activity that also requires a login. And it has, um, you know, some other features as well, like in-app purchases. And then we also have an app here, which is Art of Manliness, which is a really popular app that shows blog posts from artofmanliness.com and podcast episodes and things like that. So I'm going to show you how to create an app like this and lots of other ones as well. So after you sign up, you will see a probably a screen that's going to ask you to reset your password. Go ahead and do that and log in at myappressor.com. You will be redirected to your app dashboard. That's going to have a uh, something after myappressor.com, like myappressor.com forward slash you know, my site, whatever it is, just make sure you bookmark that because that's where you're going to come back to log in and build all your apps. And we also need that URL to help you in support so that we know where to go. So you're going to, you're not going to see apps like this. You're just going to have uh, kind of a, a screen that's blank, that's ready to go. And you're going to be able to create a new app. So let's go ahead and click the create new app button. So you can give your app a title and you can change it so that it has your the colors of your branding you'll be able to do change lots more colors later this is just kind of to get you started so the next screen is to install the AppPressor plugins and theme um, you can just go to your WordPress site plugins add new search for AppPressor and activate and install it you will need to edit some settings for that after the app is created and I'll show you that in a minute you also want to install the JWT authentication plugin this is what handles your login and registration and membership features in your app. It helps us to keep everything secure. So you will want to install that and make sure that you have a secret key added to your wp-config PHP file. So sometimes that needs to be done via FTP because we are not allowed to write to that file from a plugin. So uh, just make sure to follow the instructions on that one and make sure that that key has been defined otherwise your logins will not work. If you're not using login or registration or anything like that in your app, then you don't need to install this plugin. The last thing you want to do right now is install the AppPressor theme, uh, the AP3 Ion theme, and um, you can click on this link to go to your account page to download it. That's also where you're going to download the other plugins and extensions, such as for WooCommerce, BuddyPress, LearnDash, etc., push notifications. And then um, you're going to download the theme and install it under your WordPress site themes add new upload and just make sure you don't activate it. So this is not going to change the theme on your WordPress website as long as you don't activate it. All we do is we use this theme in the app when you're uh, to display your WordPress content when it's needed. <clears throat> you're not able to actually use a custom theme in the app. You do need to use this one, but you can create a child theme if you like. Instructions for that are in our documentation. So going to the next step, you're going to configure what app menu you want to start with. You can change this later. You can um, use some of the add some of these preferences if you like, in enabling logins. And you're going to add your WordPress URL. This is the URL to the site where you get the AppPressor plugin is installed. It does need to be HTTPS. And then you can click Verify URL, and we're just going to make sure that everything looks okay. If you know you installed the AppPressor plugin and you're still getting an error or something, just click Do Later. So next, you're going to choose a home page for your app. Uh, these have different configurations based on what type of app you want to make. You can choose one here. Some of them display the items that are in your menu. Um, other ones are just static, have a login for a membership app or WordPress posts, things like that. You can also add some additional pages, intro slides, link to your website. You can add another custom page, um, and you can edit all this later. You can also choose to add your WooCommerce or BuddyPress pages here. Uh, these do require a bit of extra setup. Make sure you have the required plugins installed, and uh, WooCommerce does require you to grab some API keys. So you can add this. You can do that later if you want. 
then click create app and what we're going to do is set up everything behind the scenes we're going to uh, create your new app and we're going to start compiling it so that you can see it in the app preview now the app preview is actually a live version of your app it's not just a fake kind of dummy preview so it does take a bit of time to recompile it when you make changes and also when we set it up so it is going to take a few minutes um, so while that's setting up you can check out our getting started video you can also configure your WordPress plugin settings. So you're going to want to go to your WordPress site, visit the AppPressor settings page, and add these settings. And then you can also go to your account page and download and install the um, extra extensions that you want to use for your app. Um, like we have some for push notifications and you know uh, the plugin integrations that we have. Um, if you after you wait a few minutes, go ahead and click hide this message, and then you can customize and build your app. Um, just for expediency, I'm going to go to an app that's already built, and I'll show you how this stuff works. By the way, on this page, there are some settings you can check out. You don't really need to change any of those right now. Like you, you don't set up push notifications until later when you're building for a device, um, but you can go through those settings if you like. So this is going to be where. The magic happens. This is where you're going to customize your colors and add pages to your app and um, compile it for a device so you can do testing and all that kind of stuff. So the first tab you'll see is the colors tab where you can change your app to uh, either a beautiful color or an obnoxious color, whichever one you choose to do. It is your prerogative. Uh, so you can actually change most of the colors here. And if there are colors that uh, you need to change but that are not available in the color pickers you want to do some maybe more fine-tuning um, you can do that under the design tab which is where you can change fonts and also add some custom CSS <clears throat> to get the selectors for custom CSS you will want to use a browser inspector and if you don't know how to do that you probably want to uh, have someone help you with custom CSS the next tab is for settings and this is where you're going to have some of the native uh, an, an app store listing settings that you need but for a really important feature is the menu um, the app works like a website where if you have anything in the menu that's the pages that's going to show up on the site and that's where your visitors are going to be able to go same thing with the app so uh, you need to have a menu set and you need to have pages in that menu and that's what shows up in the app so here you'll see what uh, menus you have set you can also change those if you do change them you probably will have to rebuild your app to see the the effect of that just keep that in mind and then you have some uh, features for the native for the app stores which I'm not going to go into here you do have your icon and splash screen um, some offline files header logo things like that uh, so let's see the next thing I wanted to go over is just how to get content into your app so let's say you have a WordPress site and you have some uh, WordPress posts or you have some Learn Dash content or WooCommerce content or things like that. We're going to add that mainly through the custom pages. So if you go to custom pages and then you click on add new page, this is where you're going to be adding most of your WordPress content. And this may look a little bit different from you. We are making some tweaks to this right now to make things a little bit easier, but uh, the concept is the same. So if you want just a list of WordPress posts, um, like I'll show you an example. This one here is just a list of WordPress posts. They're coming in through the API. You can, um, you know, it's just gonna display the content, media and images. You don't have any custom plugins or anything. You want it to be really fast. The way to do that is to add a WordPress post page. And you can choose the way that you want it to look. You can uh, choose the route that you want it to take, whether it's normal posts. If you have, uh, you can also add parameters here like for categories, and then add the category ID. Uh, you can just click the help button if you want to see an explanation of all that in our little uh, beacon there. And then uh, you can also add a custom route if you have like a custom post type and you want to change that to a post type. <clears throat> just make sure that you do need some additional setup to use custom post types because those don't show up uh, by default. You do need to add a little plugin to make those work. Uh, the next thing that I want you to see is the custom HTML pages. These are probably the most powerful uh, feature that we have in AppPressor because it allows you to add 
whatever you want in whatever format or layout you want. So you can add a fully offline page here that um, displays images and media and has custom HTML and you don't even need an internet connection to view it. Um, and that's only for stuff that you know you can't create a form or anything that's only for static content. Or you can add WordPress content here and uh, you can arrange things the way that you want. So for example, uh, let me just grab a little bit of sample code. So in our custom pages, you can add uh, images. You can add the uh, Ionic tags, such as the Ion card, which looks pretty cool. You can also add in buttons that will open up pages uh, in, in the app or external links. And you can also add in WordPress posts and things like that. So I'm going to show you what the final result is. For example, the, uh, the WooCommerce shop page is a custom HTML page that's displaying products. And if I open up the shop page, you'll see that it has our WooList component. Now you can move this around. You can add another one. You could put like a uh, featured page, uh, featured products. Like for example, if I wanted to put in here, like this is my featured product. And then here I would just put in products. I'm gonna go featured equals true. And that probably take out infinite scroll and maybe do per page equals three. Um, now, if this is a little bit confusing to you and you don't write HTML, we have samples for you uh, where you can just kind of copy and paste. And we're also gonna have some extra help in this editor probably by the time you're seeing this video. So then I could put here products that um, and then that would like display the rest of the products <clears throat> so uh, another way to use that is with our learn dash pages so for example I have this login um, bar at the top of the page which is let me show you this is login bar at the top of the page here that allows people to log in and then I have some courses listed below these are coming from a sample site so there's nothing in them which is why they look silly but um, you'll see that you can get your Learn Dash courses in there that way. And you can also just display a list of WordPress posts that way um, and basically do anything you want. So those, those pages are really powerful. The next thing you can do with that is add a media list, which is where you can actually display like podcasts or sermons, videos, audio, whatever it is that you have that's media. This is a great way to do it. And all you need to do is add the media downloads page here and add in the API route to the posts that you have set up. So you do need a little bit of additional setup for this. You have to add the URL to your media file in that post using our plugin. So just see the documentation for that. And then you can optionally allow people to download those to their device. So they could be able to watch your videos or listen to your audio offline, or they can just listen to it online as you wish. Let's see, the other type of pages we have would be BuddyPress pages, which you can, which are kind of set up automatically. And then also your WooCommerce pages, which I, um, which I already showed you can, we have these set up for you so that you can add anything you want on here. Like, if in the cart you wanted to add some, you know, upsells or something, you could add in the uh, Woo list again with products. And then, you know, if you just wanted it to have some type of category or something, uh, you can look up in the WooCommerce REST API how to add uh, product categories or, you know, I, I know they have like featured that you can do here. You could do that like underneath the cart. We do this so that you can basically make any type of layout you want for your pages. Um, other things you can do would be add like a language settings, push notification settings, in-app purchase, things like that. And again, we are going to have uh, lots of help uh, starter templates where you can just kind of copy and paste that stuff in. <clears throat> so once you create some of your pages, you can either add those to the menu right there in the dialog, which would be right here, you can add that after you, when you save it, it's gonna add it to the menu directly. If you don't add it to the menu, just make sure that you go in later, go over to the menu, go to add items, and then search for it in custom pages or the search box up here, add it to the menu, and then um, you will need to rebuild your app preview once you add custom pages to it. 
Another way to add content is um, the, what I just showed you with the custom pages. That is all using the API. And so if you have custom plugins, custom plugins usually don't work through the API. So you will want to use a different way of adding that content. Um, one way to do that is to, with the WordPress slash external links. And you can just basically add in a, um, a URL here. And what it's going to do is just display your page inside the app just in an iframe. And it is going to use our AP3 Ion theme so that it looks seamless. But that is one way to get plugins to work. If you want a list of posts <clears throat> that are using plugins, there are other ways to get that in there. Call, if you look up app post list in our documentation, that is another way to do it. I'll go ahead and quickly show that. So if you look up WordPress iframe post lists, that will show you how to do that. And we do have uh, customers successfully using that. So for example, if you have custom ads you need to display in the posts, or you have like a, a form that's embedded, or you have like, you know, Facebook commenting or something that just doesn't work through the API, you can do it this way. So once you are done customizing that, you can go over to the build and preview tab and click on rebuild preview. And what that's gonna do is take all the changes you made and compile those into the app preview. And like I said, this is actually a live uh, version of your app in the browser. It's not a fake, uh, you know, dummy preview. So it does take a bit of time to compile it, but it also gives you the most accurate representation of your app so that when you go to test on a device or go into the app stores, there won't be, you know, as many uh, inconsistencies there. Once you're ready to build for a device, just email us, we can help you get that set up for Android without any configuration. iOS does require you to set up your developer account, add your device UDID to your developer account, and then we can build the certificates for you if you need and kind of get that set up. As far as like push notifications and building for the app stores, we can help you get that set up once you're done with your free trial, and we can help you get your app submitted to the app stores, test push notifications and things like that. So that's it for this video, and I hope it was informative and have fun.